Oftentimes we manifest experiences like disappointment, betrayal, heartbreak, dramas, dilemmas. Right? It seems like we're all, by and large, in this experience that says, I'd love to love myself if only I had time. Because I got all this stuff going on. Got craziness at work. By God, my family, Matt, my family. Got them. Got all this. Got kids, baby. Got to work. Hobbies. I don't know what else. Right? We always have things to do. And we always have these problems to fix. And what if I told you this, that in your holographic reality, right? When I say holographic reality, I mean the world you see and you as a person are both made of the same energy and things are popping into your holographic reality for you to experience and interact and learn things from it. And what if I were to say that all of the tumultuous distractions and upheavals from your life are manifesting tangible, justifiable reasons why you still don't have time to give you the loving attention that you have not learned how to give yourself up to this point. That until we learn to love ourselves, we create space in our life for all of these things to manifest to pop up as justifications as to why I have no time to love myself because I got all these things to fix and work on. I'll put it to you on a bigger level. If the world stopped and loved its own heart, if every person stopped right now and said, I love you to their own heart, just to their own heart, knowing when we say love, I love you to one heart, it equally are blessings that go to all hearts. If every single person said, I love you to their own heart, the ocean would instantaneously purify itself and there would be no pollution. There would be no Fukushima pollution in the world. And every single person that says, no, that's not true, is justifying why they have the right to give their attention to the very thing that distracts them from the love they have not learned how to give themselves. So it's well intended that people want to stop and do great to fix the world and to bring pollution to an end, and I'm a fan of all of that. However, all of the people that are focusing on the problem are equally not spending time loving their own heart. So all of the things that they need to fix that are the problems of the world give them more time to justify why they don't have time to love their own heart. And it all starts as an energetic misunderstanding. I'm not saying love your own heart. Who cares? I'm saying you cannot shift an external manifestation without changing the internal vibrational source. And every single thing in your life, in my life, in everyone's life is a holographic play. Now it seems as if we are all in the same play. Turns out we're all in our own timelines, we're all in our own worlds, we're all in our own universes, and we're all playing different roles in each other's play. And we all think we're all in the same movie, which is just how good the editing software and the special effects really are. The fact that we all think we're all having the same conversation and we understand each other is the greatest hallucination, magic or miracle life could ever manufacture. People make sounds only they know what they're saying. And the other person subconsciously agrees to take the intention behind their sounds and to make that the meaning that they affix to it and say, I understand. The fact that you see two people talking and they kind of seem like they get one another is remarkable. <laughs> one person says, <laughs> That's what's happening. But we have subconsciously agreed that there is meaning and reason, and so there is. That's how powerful we are. When 
this dawns upon you deep enough and you realize if I started to make time to love my heart in response to anything that pops up in my field and I take care of business in my personal life but as a spiritual practice I make time to love my heart and that's it and anything that bothers me or frustrates me is just showing me the next part of myself to love in my heart. And loving my heart becomes the only response to anything in the world. You would no longer energetically create space for life to have a reason to pop into your holograms, thing that steer you away from love and distract you from love. And over a period of time, you would start to become the first person who would be enveloped by your love. At that point, your vibration increases and you change your point of attraction. And then all of a sudden, the things that you attract seem more loving and harmonious. And even if it's tumultuous, you're going to get through it very lovingly and harmoniously. Because you are, in fact, influencing and changing your perception and the actual reality that you're experiencing by saying to the universe, I don't wish to have time for anything in life but to love. If anyone comes my way, I will love them. If anything gets my attention, I'm going to love it. If some god-awful, dark, winged bat, what the hell, I don't know what else, comes in my presence, I love you. I'm not doing, just completely go off the rails with love. If I have a nightmare, and I'm in the middle of a nightmare, I love you. You wake up in the morning, I love you. You see a bird, hey, love you. Keep up the good work. What would happen if you went Jim Carrey bonkers with love? And you realized your life is only giving you justifiable reasons. It's giving you reasons why it's very important for you to try to have control and try to worry and try to keep everything going in your life. It's showing you why you can't let go because you've spent so much time unknowingly holding on that life is giving you the greatest evidence as to why you should repeat the behavior that's not giving you the results you desire. So why not change your behavior, start loving yourself, and watch the illusion that you're not locked into fall apart and completely unravel. What I'm talking about is a love revolution and it starts within you. And it does not necessarily need to include anyone else because everyone's got to start their own revolution. And it doesn't matter if people are nice to you or not. They're not nice to you. Why are they not nice to you? Because they're treating you the way they treat themselves and the way they've been treated by others. So they're showing you how much love lacks in their life, which means they're crying out for love. And they don't know they're crying out for love. And they're projecting onto you what you haven't done to keep their ego happy. And it's someone begging for love. And so we don't give people what they want. We give them what they need. I love you. And if that doesn't make them happy, if that brings disappointment, it's going to just keep going with the theme of their life. As if they weren't disappointed before this moment. Come on. And then the you that feels like I shouldn't disappoint people, I love you to that. This is about a love revolution. Because if, if we think we are going to externally take care of business, and then all of a sudden we're going to have time for love, when has that ever worked? When has that ever worked in the history of whatever? And the history of whatever includes a lot. It's very official. Because the, the, the I don't want to say the controversy, the propaganda, that's the word I'm looking for, the propaganda, and I say this with respect, but, but the propaganda is that when you think external things need to change in your life and your world and your society, whether it's a political climate, socioeconomical climate, whatever, when we point to the external that needs to change first, it becomes us versus them, 
you versus them, and it creates separation, duality, and the exact climate where love does not receive your time and attention. It creates conflict, and it creates competition, and there's no cooperation in that. So what is the space that cultivates the greatest spiritual cooperation? When you stop waiting for other people to cooperate with you and you just start cooperating with reality. Everyone's got to start their own love revolution. So you're the only one living in your reality. No one but you knows that you're here. Everyone only knows their experience of you. You're the only one that can start cooperating with the forces of nature. And cooperating with the forces of nature means I wake up in the morning, whether I'm familiar with loving my heart or not, I become familiar with it. I love you. Don't try to feel it if you don't feel it. Because if you say I love you and you don't feel it, doesn't feel authentic, that just means you haven't said those words enough time for your subconscious mind to know it as familiar. And so it's still being interpreted as foreign, which means the subconscious mind doesn't know that it's safe for you to let that in. If you keep saying it to yourself over and over again, it goes into the familiar category and all of a sudden your subconscious mind gives your body permission to feel the energy of those words. So it's not faking it, it's just knowing that you are the one that is rewriting the programs of your subconscious mind. You are the one that can rewrite your brain chemistry. You are the one that can clear and rewrite your DNA. And all you have to do is love your heart on a regular basis, relentlessly. And I say that as a very exciting positive word. Love yourself relentlessly. And when the voice in your head says, that's enough, do not stop. Because what's telling you to stop are the patterns that won't make the journey if you continue. And those aren't the patterns you want in your reality because it's those patterns that are giving rise to you manifesting all the things that keep you distracted from loving your own heart. And when you love your own heart, you're loving all hearts simultaneously. So why would you not want to make time to love your own heart when all that's going to do is bless every single one in existence and transform reality from the inside out? We all know the kind of world we want to live in. And I will tell you that it is you starting your own love revolution and loving your own heart that will bring to an end the things that you no longer resonate with and will create the space for the things that you wish to see in the world to come to life. We are way past the point of history of, I want to experience heaven on earth. And while wanting heaven on earth, we sit around waiting for, okay, who's going to do it? Any one of you. There's billions of people on the planet. Anyone want to have a crack at it? I'll cheer you on. No. We're going to build this thing together together but individually and we're all going to eventually realize I will not find personal happiness absolute fulfillment complete and absolute liberation joy and satisfaction in my personal life nor will I know will I be able to create the space for the world to experience that and to manifest the highest possibility of this planet until I start my own love revolution and stop expecting anyone to do anything but be there to inspire the feeling in my body that I will love no matter how I feel about it. If we desire the world to be different, if we desire to experience change, if we've all been like, we're excited about the future and what possibilities are going to happen, You've got to be the one that creates that. And when people hear that, they immediately go to external creation. And that's not what I'm speaking of. I'm speaking of creating new patterns 
within your subconscious mind by making I love you the most popular thing you say to yourself. And you become the most safe person for you to be around. Because the magic is when you are the safest person for you to be around, you will never feel unsafe around another person because you'll always be there with you. And the only reason why other people can make you feel unsafe is because you are not yet the safest person for you to be around, which is another way of seeing how often you say, I love you to yourself. I mean, there's the evidence right there. And I say this to you as someone who used to be scared of everything. I was scared of myself, scared of my potential, scared of my light, scared of darkness, scared of anything imaginable I was scared of. If I was in an unfamiliar situation, I'd be scared. I was frightened of everything, basically. Until I surrendered to love. And I'm not going to say that the surrender to love that I've experienced was this valiant, I decide to surrender to love today, and I went easily. I just eventually saw that nothing else worked or mattered. So it wasn't like this valiant declaration. It's just the direction life pointed me. And at a certain point, it was either surrender to the harmony of loving myself and trusting life, or be smashed. And I was smashed like we all have been smashed over and over and over again. And for me, the greatest day was in my final smashing, the pieces forgot how to reassemble. And I never came back together again. And what remained was the liberated grace of light, the light that is here loving itself as I am and celebrating the love that I am by aiming that love into your heart and transforming the existence of every human being one I love you at a time. And all I ask you to do is join me. Think of it this way. When you give your attention to loving yourself, you're not focused on worries. And when you're not consistently focused on worries because you have a different focus, which is love, life no longer has the need or gets the message from you to put things in your hologram that remind you to experience worry. Because the more you do something, the universe thinks you're saying, hey, I'd like to have this experience again. So every time you worry, life goes, we should whip something up to justify worry. Oh, you didn't want to worry? Why did you keep doing it? You kept doing it, so we kept giving you things to worry about, because I don't know, I thought you liked it. I don't know. I don't know. It's your reality. I guess it brought you happiness. I don't know. If you don't like worry, fear, doubt, self-hatred, um, then it's not trying to stop those things because those are like snowballs that are rolling downhill. They've built momentum. It's an avalanche now. So we can't stop what's already in motion, but we can create a brand new creation that when that new creation is at a higher vibration, it transmutes everything below it. So when you focus on loving your heart, you create new vibrational patterns at a higher frequency that nullifies and transmutes all patterns within your field simultaneously when those pa bigger patterns start getting created. And then life no longer gets the message of, hey, put crap in my life. So I can worry, hurt, hate, and then be disappointed that I don't have time to love myself. 
And the magic is if you put it all on the line. And when I say put it all on the line, what are you going to lose? Right? You're going to lose the lowest vibrational ego experiences in the universe. You're not really losing anything. It's kind of like a jackpot more so. It's kind of like, where do I send the basket of muffins, right? You're losing the things that bring you the greatest amount of trauma. So you're not losing anything of value. But when you take your attention off of worry, regret, guilt, shame, I mean, we can go through the list, jealousy, hostility, anger, rage. When you take your attention off of those things and say, I'm just going to love the one who feels that way, you're no longer telling reality to pop things into your hologram to give you reasons to go through those emotional mechanisms. Does that make sense? So I'll tell you a story to illustrate this point, and this is true story, because making it up wouldn't be as funny as the truth, right? So <clears throat> many years ago, I came to a point in my journey, and I realized that there were some subconscious beliefs in my field, and they were around scarcity and money issues. I don't know if anyone could resonate with that, but maybe not, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> And, and what I really noticed, and this is something that I noticed, I noticed that when I would see a credit card bill in the mail, it, uh oh, right? That was the first thing. Uh oh. Like that same feeling of like uh, Matt to the principal's office. You know that kind of feeling? Which of course doesn't mean bad. It could be like maybe I'm getting an award. Maybe I'm so amazing, I'm, I'm getting a treat. Usually not. But that was the feeling, like, credit card came in the, in the, in the mail. Uh-oh. Didn't even open it, just uh-oh, right? It's already just abject disappointment in myself. Just abject, I am horrible, right? <laughs> this is gonna show me some impulsive behavior and things I don't wanna look at. And so I was starting to notice that just the bill itself would just be this doomsday, uh-oh. And I started to realize that I was anchoring energy into a mechanism that required that credit card bill to be something inherently limiting to justify the repeating of that pattern. Does that make sense? And so I, instead of thinking, I'm going to stop going, uh-oh, because that's the problem. If you think, I'm going to stop the negative pattern, it already has energy. You can't stop it. You've already created it. But you can create something totally different, and if that's at a higher vibration, that will just transmute. So here's what I did. It's very funny. <clears throat> so I decided that every time bills come in the mail, I would just go, woohoo! <laughs> and I would get excited. First thing I did. A couple of steps I did. And, this is how, and, the, and literally, this is how I learned to manifest prosperity, because it's all an energy game. I, I, I assure you, it's all an energy game. So first thing, <clears throat> bill would come in the mail. Woohoo! Yes, bills are here. And then the next thing I did was I would use the reality of the bill to prove to myself that the bill was trying to convince me how abundant I was. So I open up the bill. Yes, bill. Hello, discover card. I'm going to discover something today. Discover. It says in the name. I'm going to discover something right now. Look at the bill. Okay. And it would say, you know, like total balance owed. Wow, that's a large number, discover card. Wow. You know, okay. I just discovered something. And I would, I, and, and, and I'm trying to create a new pattern. So I'd say to myself, there's got to be a way this is trying to prove how abundant I am. And then I would see the minimum payment owed would be a far smaller number. And I would always tell myself, the smaller number is all they're asking me. The big number is, eh, eventually, this is your, what you're going to give us. But right now, all we want is this. And that, I actually have in my bank account, which means I'm abundant. All they are asking of me is what I already have. I'm rich. Because in this money, they say, you owe this. But I have that. I can participate in this moment. I'm abundant. I have everything I need exactly when I need it. In this moment, I'm wealthy. And so then month after month, woohoo! 
I'm wealthy. Woohoo, I'm wealthy. Within three months, and Julie knows during the time I did this work energetically, transformed our entire reality. And I said, this is all going to change. There's a, there's a windfall being created, and it's going to come, and it did. And I say that because I don't have more access than you do. I just have a willingness that when I learn and see something deeper, I'm willing to put into action relentlessly. And I'd walk around downtown Seattle and I'd see people on their lunch breaks in their nice suits and I would just be like, look how abundant you are. Because every time I would, I would, I would focus on someone else's abundance, what is my subconscious mind hearing? Repeatedly, abundance, 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 abundance. So what became the most popular word in my subconscious mind? Abundance. What did I start to experience and receive? Manifestation is a cosmic word game. So if you can repeat abundance out loud and manifest money out of the ethers of life, and I'm only telling you this because it's never untrue, then what are the odds that by you saying I love you to yourself and sending I love you to every person that passes you by in traffic, what are the odds that over time you manifest an entirely different earth where people act and treat each other that mirror back the way you've taken the time to love yourself? Life will pay you to not worry when you spend your time loving yourself. Just as you're sitting and receiving this transmission of energy, all, subcon all subconscious self-defeating habits and patterns and all blockages and barriers to your own love are being completely dissolved as you sit here. That's the energetic healing transformative gift I offer in the work that I do. And as that work occurs, I'm here on behalf of the universe to brief you on different ways that you could approach your reality. Because you are co-creating this, whether you know it or not. And it's not about trying to create outcomes. We don't create outcomes. What we do is we anchor vibrational access to certain levels or states of consciousness. And by giving the body permission to feel a certain way naturally, by using those words as gifts that we give our, our own heart to other hearts, we create access to infinite quantum timelines where we get to experience a world behaving and treating us the way we've thoughtfully and lovingly begun to treat ourselves. That's not just manifestation. That's quantum mechanics. Life is a cosmic word game. All words have energy. The words you say to yourself most often dictate how you feel about yourself and how you feel about yourself becomes the view of how you think the world sees you. There is no world seeing you. There's only reflections of how you treat yourself that you think other people see in you. And then how you talk to yourself, you call forth actors to play in front of you and to treat you the way that matches the way you feel about yourself most often. So life's a play, but are you playing yet? Or are you lost in the play? Because those that really understand the mechanics of this aren't just here to create a nice big fancy house, to drive a nice big shiny car, which is fine. At a certain point, you will have manifested the living crap out of reality. And there's nothing more to want and then you get onto the real work, which is to actually manifest reality so that all beings in your presence can be as free and loving and harmonious and satisfied as you've come to be. 
So the reason you have infinite access to create anything in the universe and you can have any amount of money you really desire is because life will make up anything out of thin air and give you everything you want just to get you completely so either overly satisfied by your desire or nauseated by your <laughs> endless thirst for more until finally your power and your ability to access takes on a much bigger picture for the well-being of all. So eventually we all start working for the well-being of all. And whether you just want satisfaction in your personal life, what it takes to create complete resolve in your personal life are the exact same steps that are required to create harmony for all. So it doesn't matter what your focus is. And if you want personal happiness before you start focusing on the big picture for the world, it's okay. Because exactly what you're going to be required to do to return to love is equally going to affect and benefit others. So when we know that love is the secret component to help us access the infinite mysteries of our soul's journey, it actually doesn't even matter if you're coming from a greedy place. Because greed plays no part in the fact that everything that you learn to create with love for yourself is equally a benefit for others. So like, greed's not even relevant. Greed, love is so powerful, greed's irrelevant. How's that? So it's not like, oh, it, because then it becomes, then spirituality becomes like behavior driven, right? Oh, I'm being greedy. I'm not being a good little boy. Oh, that's not the way we should act. That's not godlike. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you start your own love revolution. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter why. That's why it's a love revolution, because the, lower, the lowest qualities in existence could never get in the way when you really understand this and you start to really embrace the power of your own divine authority. So here's a question I want before we go to questions. I want you to ask yourself, if each breath, right, could be our last, we really don't know. I mean, we have this confident idea, oh, there'll be more. But we really don't know, to be honest. We really don't know if every breath is the last. If we treat every breath like the last, it becomes a huge gift. But every breath, you don't know if it's going to be followed by another one. So if this breath right here is the only one you know that you've been given, why would you use the breath to say anything to yourself or others other than I love you? What the hell is so important? That I love you is, uh, it's not, uh, it's not that important. You've been given one breath in this moment. Every time you blink your eyes, you're in a different timeline. You're in a different reality, even though you think you're in the same one. You have one breath right now. In this reality, before you're completely reborn within a split second and given a brand new body. When you blink, that's what happens, by the way. It's amazing. Especially when you don't know that. It's amazing. You have one breath. What if the power of your choice was that with this one breath, I give it to creating harmony, peace, and resolve for all hearts, to wiping out the history of persecution and violence, purifying all lands, creating abundance for all beings, and creating a world where all can thrive and prosper and share their gifts. And all you have to do is take the breath and give it to saying to your heart or to others, I love you. That's as simple as the love revolution gets. What makes it powerful is when you give your choices and your breath to those powerful words. You're here to be an individual. You're here to create anything that you want and you have the right to want anything that you desire. But you must first stand for love, which is why the quote is, enter the kingdom first, and then all these things and more will be given to you. And the kingdom is your own heart, and you enter the gates of the kingdom by returning to love and becoming the safest person for you to be around. One, I love you at a time.
And the only reason why I'm sitting here transmitting and speaking these words to you is because my life has become a testimony of that choice. When we're not together, that's what my life is dedicated to, wherever I go. In every breath, that's my choice. And there's so many gifts in that. Life becomes so outrageously satisfying. Life becomes so miraculous and so powerful. I want you to taste what I've been savoring. I want you to discover what I have found. And the love revolution is the only way for this to unfold. I love you. I love you. I love you. Every time you say it, your barriers, your walls, your inner imprisonment dissolves. I love you. I love you.